Yo yo, what is good people and welcome along to my latest video which sees us talking about Dorset which lies on the south coast of England. Now it is well known for its array of geology and makes up a big part of the Jurassic coastline. Now originally one of you guys who I will refer to as DL brought this place to my attention due to the ridge that stretches from one side of the coast to the other which makes up the Isle of Purbeck due to it being surrounded on three sides by the English Channel and the fourth which consists of streams and marshland, hence the name. Now, you might see for yourselves, it appears almost like a barrier, like a defence type of thing, with the only real gap being at Corfe Castle, which I'll get to shortly. Now, I've always been fascinated with this area, mainly due to my late father who was in the army and spent a lot of time at the nearby Bovington camp due to his driving of tanks. Now I bring that up because I always remember as a child being shown the village of Tynham for instance, which at one time was a thriving village. That was until the war happened, when residents were made to leave with the promise of being able to return, which never actually happened. So it's actually now a ghost town and it's not the only village or place in Dorset either. And I do recommend you to go and look up these lost villages for yourselves. Now anyway, I mentioned Bobbington conveniently a tank training area which has me wondering what might have been there in the past what have unknowing tank drivers blown up and destroyed over the years unfortunately i can't ask him now but if anybody out there has been to bovington or knows anyone that's trained at bovington get in touch so anyway let's move on and take a look at the area on lidar and then we'll reference it on one of the old os maps as well just to see if anything does come up And then I've managed to find a little bit of information about the Isle of Purbeck. Um, I think it's just like some standard info. So feel free to pause it and read through it if you fancy it. Now, as I've mentioned, the only real prominent gap in this ridge is found at Corfe Castle, which is the main focus of today's video. And it's yet another property belonging to National Trust. And just like the majority of places that they own, this was gifted to them. It was gifted to them by a fellow by the name of Ralph Banks, who also gifted quite a small house called Kingston Lacey and its surrounding estate in his will when he died, obviously. Uh, he was survived by two children, to which he left them £50,000 each. Now, this was only in the 1980s, so it wasn't that long ago. So let me get this straight. He left his own flesh and blood, fifty grand, while donating all of this. Now, did he hate his children that much? Or maybe there's another reason for National Trust and the like to take over these historical places and then charge us extortionate fees to go and see them for ourselves. Now this caught my interest straight away, it's not in the actual castle itself but further down and it appears to be an old bricked archway of some sorts which doesn't actually go anywhere now but it does have signs that it's been destroyed with just this little small piece remaining. Now I'm not sure what it is or what it was but it's not the first and it won't be the last arch that I've come across like this. So yeah let's have a look at Corfe Castle and we'll go through a bit of the history. And now it's said to have probably been a fortification here long before the castle due to its location but like everything else with history nobody actually knows it was supposedly built for william the conqueror in 1086 but it took 199 years for the building to be complete funny that just going to be quiet for a second here and let you hear what I actually said at the time of seeing this. I wish it was windy. Oh! When National Trust 
was bequeathed the castle in 1982 before the third tower was deep in accumulated soil. Soil. Hey. So this tells you that this was at one time buried. Okay, so hopefully you heard me say that there, or you read for yourself, that this was still buried in 1982. Now, I don't know for sure, but I am working on something with my mate Dan that might help figure out how all this ended up being buried in like such a relatively short time ago. Which we'll leave there for now until we've got a better understanding of it ourselves. But just the fact that they are telling us that this place was under soil should set off alarm bells straight away. The material needed for a project like this is mind-blowing. Thinking about this place being built is mad in itself. If you visit like we did on a rather windy day, and it begs the question how they managed to do this almost a thousand years ago. And yeah, this here just further shows that the castle is still buried in places now. And believe it or not, these gaps are actually windows. And you'll see shortly as well where the doorway is <laughs> or where it isn't. So it does give you some idea of just how much is still underground. Yeah. The more we looked around this area and the higher we got, the more we questioned the place. The wind was absolutely horrendous. Yet we're made to believe that before windows existed, this place was lived in. Go and have a look for yourselves. Windows weren't actually introduced to castles until the 1300s and it was only a select few at that point. And it wasn't until the 1600s that glass actually revolutionised how castles were designed. Yeah, at the time I did read some info uh, at the castle which said it was unlike most castles as this was sat high up on the hill whereas the majority were found low down in valleys etc. Now I can't find the picture I took unfortunately but I do remember thinking at the time what a load of BS. I mean I've been to a number of castles in my time. Dudley, Ludlow, Warwick, Harlick, Nottingham just to name a few. From memory they all sit high up on hills. I really wish I had a picture so I could show you now. But yeah anybody that's visiting here in the near future have a look for yourselves and send me a picture if you do come across the information as it's on one of the many info boards. Stay tuned for more. I've been Nikki B, and until next time.